This video is brought to you by friend of the channel Squarespace. Stick around to learn more about them as well as a special offer they're making available through my channel. Sifu. Wax on, wax off. Sifu is a game that is going to piss off a lot of people. Not because it's bad, but because it's almost certainly not what you expected it to be. So if you've been paying any attention at all to Sifu, you probably imagine a game that's kind of for everyone, or most people at least. The trailers just make it look like a cool kung fu movie made playable. You're probably imagining a game of 15 to 20 levels, a progression tree giving you access to new moves and combos, plenty of goons to beat up, lots of boss encounters, you know, standard video game stuff for the everyman. Sifu is definitely not that. Sifu is five levels and five levels only. Each level can be completed in 30 or so minutes your first time through, but with shortcut unlocks and you getting better at the encounters in those levels, you'll probably be able to clear most levels inside of 10 minutes or so, some of them significantly less depending on the shortcut. So you might be thinking, five levels, 30 minutes a pop, are you telling me this game is two and a half hours long? No, I'm definitely not telling you that. I put around 10 hours into Sifu, maybe a little more. The reason I've spent so much time with it is because it's pretty hard and because the game's structure demands that you perfect each level before you move on to the next. Wax on, wax off. You begin Sifu in the first level, age 20 years old. Each time you die, you get older. How much older you get is determined by your death counter. So the first time I die, I get one year older. The second time I die, I get two years older. So if I'm dying over and over again on a single encounter, I'll eventually start losing seven, eight, nine years of my life every time I die. This death counter can be reset by killing certain enemies, but it's not reset by killing bosses, which is a motherfucker of a design choice that we'll come back to later. So at this point, you're like, okay, that sounds fine. Just make it to the end of a level before you die of old age. How hard could it be? Not that hard to be honest, but get this. Your age does not reset at the end of the level. It carries right through all five levels. And if I ever hit a point where I am too old, it's game over and I'm pushed back to my last checkpoint. The checkpoint system does take the edge off things a little. Your playthrough records the age you were when you completed each level. So if I finish level one at age 25, then that is saved as my progress, which means that I can then do level two over and over again, starting at age 25. If I eventually make it to level three, but I'm 60 years old, I might think, well, I'm too old now. So I'll go back to level two and I'll keep doing it until I can reach a better level three checkpoint, ideally something like 30 years or younger. So one of the more interesting byproducts of this game structure is that it forces the player to seek not completion, but perfection. Beating bosses in this game is hard. The first time you fight them, you're like, damn, how the hell am I gonna do this? But eventually you get it done because by and large, the encounters are very well designed and you'll eventually find your way through them. In almost any other game, beating that boss is the end of that journey. Victory achieved. You breathe a big sigh of relief onto the next challenge. But here in Sifu, defeating a boss is just the first step in the journey towards truly mastering that boss, because you can't afford to spend 10 or 15 years of your life on that boss. You need to get it done almost perfectly, spending as few lives as possible. So that means that once you've defeated them, the very next thing you'll do is beat up the same level and do it again and again and again until you get it right. Wax on, wax off. The structure might sound like a little much, but I left out one important part. You still need to do the actual levels themselves every time you want to fight the boss. There are no midway checkpoints in this game. It's not like when you die, you get pushed back to a nearby bonfire. When you die, you go back to the start of the level and you need to clear that entire level in order to face the boss again. Like I said, the first time through a level will take you a fair amount of time because you're learning the level's layout, you're searching for collectibles, you're facing each room of enemies for the first time, so you don't know what to expect, etc. You get better at all of this stuff, and very soon you're dashing through levels, taking out priority targets, quickly shutting down entire rooms of enemies in a fraction of the time it took you to do so earlier. At the same time, you're also unlocking shortcuts. Each level has at least one or two pathways that are closed off the first time through, but after beating the required mini boss for the first time you get a passcode that will allow you to skip some or all of the next level greatly reducing the time it takes for you to get to the next boss encounter but make no mistake some levels
levels absolutely require you to clear a big chunk of them every single time. The second level in particular is fucking brutal. And I expect a lot of people are gonna quit this video game in frustration because of this second level. Its shortcut isn't all that short. The level is littered with fairly challenging enemies right the way through, and the boss is one of the more difficult boss encounters in the game. Getting this one right took me quite a few hours of doing the same thing over and over and over again until I got it right. Wax on. Okay, you're probably tired of hearing that now, but there is a reason that I was writing that old Karate Kid reference so hard. When Mr. Miyagi is training Daniel-san, he's making him do all sorts of bullshit, like sanding his floors and painting his fence. And Daniel's like, dude, what the fuck? I'm not your handyman, I'm your student, train me. It was only in this moment that Daniel realized that he was being trained all along, as the repetition of those movements conditioned his muscle memory. It was the repetition that was the foundation of his training, and it was that repetition that made him a fighter. Sifu embodies the same principle. Sifu will train you to become a kung fu fighter, not through stat increases or craftable gear or magic weapons or anything else. It will make a warrior out of you through repetition, running the same levels and beating the same bosses over and over again until you get it right. That structure is not going to be for most people, I expect. A lot of the discourse around Sifu is likely to center on its difficulty, but I think that's the wrong discussion. Souls-like games, for example, are difficult, but they don't demand perfection. If you kill a boss with only the tiniest sliver of health left, that's as good as killing him at full health, naked, at level 1, while using a Guitar Hero controller. Souls-like games are also more expansive in their offering. They have dozens of locations, dozens of enemies, dozens of bosses, so much gear to collect, secrets and lore to uncover. As you push through the challenging barriers erected before you, you are rewarded with a host of new discoveries. Sifu isn't like that on either front. Sifu does demand that perfection from you, and it doesn't have nearly as much to offer in terms of content. There are five levels here. They are not long. There are five boss encounters. That's it. In a way, the heart and soul of Sifu is its structure. It is the single load-bearing pillar on which this game is built. If you are someone that connects with the demands that that structure makes of you, you're going to enjoy Sifu, but I think that's a pretty select group of people. And I expect that most other people will find Sifu asks too much and gives too little. I'm not talking about the price tag, by the way. I'm talking about the cost Sifu extracts in terms of repetition and how often that can turn to frustration given how demanding the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of Sifu is. <laughs> Sifu's take on third-person melee combat is excellent. Though seemingly simple at first glance, the depth of it becomes quickly apparent as muscle memory sets in and you connect seamlessly with the capabilities of your character to instinctively react to things before your brain has processed the thought. There are light and heavy attacks that can be combined in different ways. There's a block button that allows you to stop damage to a point, but also serves as a means of parrying attacks or dodging either high or low unblockables. There's a dodge button that'll also double as a run if you hold it down enough, and that's pretty much about it to be honest. Like I said, simple, but deep because of how well all of these tools are used. When Sifu is rolling, it's difficult not to be overwhelmed by how fucking awesome it looks. Like, if you were to ever make a John Wick video game, a proper third-person melee one I mean, then this is the team that would make it and it would probably look just like this. Each encounter flows with this effortless, cinematic badassery, and as you dispatch goons and the camera swings to highlight your finishing blows, in those moments, Sifu is giving you exactly what you are hoping for when you slap down that $40 asking price. There is a progression pathway in Sifu, and it too is interesting in its structure. Each kill grants you experience, and the more enemies you dispatch without getting hit, the higher your multiplier. So clearing entire levels without getting hit once grants you a fair chunk of experience. That experience can be spent to unlock new techniques. The first time you unlock them, they're temporary, but you can continue to invest points in them so they eventually become permanent unlocks. In this way, one of the rewards for the repetition this game asks of you is that you will eventually become better and better at clearing levels, which in turn gives you more XP per level, which can be invested in more permanent unlocks. These techniques aren't I win buttons, by the way. They're just subtle expansion of your capabilities. The ability to close a small distance with a kick attack. The ability to charge and release an attack that can stun an opponent. Don't imagine that these attacks make your clears vastly easier because they don't. These attacks are situational, they're technical. They make you slightly more lethal so long as you know how to use them properly. They're very well balanced and they
they preserve the game's focus on technique, repetition, and perfect execution. If you're buying Sifu because you want a cool kung fu game that makes you feel like a cool kung fu master, I think there's very little chance you'll be disappointed with Sifu's combat, but I do think it has some problems. Camera is the big one. You spend an inordinate amount of time managing your camera in this game, so much so that it absolutely reduces your ability to fight at times. It's very difficult to fight near walls or corners because the camera will often obscure the enemy. You cannot see them at all. And you'll often lose sight of enemies as they encircle you because the camera doesn't pull back far enough to see all of them. Biggest issue, I think, is the use of the cinematic camera during finishes. As badass as this looks and feels, it's also disruptive because it's moving your camera in ways that you don't want it to move. When a finisher ends, your first order of business is quickly whipping the camera around because enemies continue to move around and reposition while this animation is taking place. There is no option in the menu to turn this off, and I really wish there was. In addition, combat doesn't always feel entirely fair. There are certain enemies you'll encounter whose attacks cannot be consistently parried without the game telling you why. They can also juke you in impossible ways that feel so frustrating. Hits that absolutely should have landed, they could just magically dodge them because they feel like it, and it makes these encounters feel random in a way that no other encounter feels. One of the things that defines Sifu's difficulty is its reliance on memorizing enemy combos so that you can avoid their unblockable attacks. Other games typically telegraph these unblockable attacks more clearly. Sekiro, for example, really clearly telegraphs when an unblockable is coming, both with a visual warning and with a split second window for you to prepare. Sifu doesn't do that. Enemies, particularly bosses, will splice in unblockable attacks or sweep attacks without any warning, and the only way to learn that those attacks are coming is by memorizing the combo that preceded them. This makes progression through Sifu slower because that process of combo memorization is more time consuming than being able to react on the fly to a telegraph. Even outside of this unblockable attack stuff, Sifu is difficult to pass, or at least more difficult than most games. Everything moves fast and enemy attacks are subtle. There's rarely the exaggerated wind-up animations that melee games will often use to warn players about incoming attacks. This makes Sifu feel leaner and more authentic, but will surely be another thing that frustrates people looking for an easier time. I'm actually only showing you the first three levels of this game because there's only five levels and I want to leave some surprises for those who choose to pick up the game. Let me just say that the art design or display here is incredible. I, I love this. It's not just the art actually. Stylistically, this game is just so fucking cool. I mean, the intro is one of the coolest fucking things I've ever seen in a video game. I'm not gonna spoil it, but oh my God, when that intro finished rolling, I was yelling like, holy shit, what is this video game? I'm a huge Kill Bill fan, and this game is very Kill Bill inspired in lots of ways, by the way. And that intro was just like, Man, if you're not going to play this game, then at least go and look up that intro montage on YouTube because it is too awesome to miss. Sifu is five levels, but it's five visually stunning levels, each of which represent a certain elemental theme like fire, water, so on. What can begin as a nightclub frequented by criminals subtly transitions into a brutal spectator arena, which when you land the final killing blow, suddenly shifts into this burning temple. The game is constantly using these bold shifts in color to instantly change the scene, to immediately transform your surroundings so that you feel like you're sinking deeper and deeper into the madness of each of your foes. The museum level in particular, incredible. You push through its sterile lobby to enter themed art exhibitions, which become increasingly more ornate before a final transition pushes you out of your own world and into somewhere else, one where the exhibitions are alive and trying to kick the shit out of you. Such vivid imagery, such bold use of color, such cinematic design, as these moments feel like an updated twist on some of the most defining moments in Kung Fu cinema. I said earlier that Sifu isn't an expansive game full of content, and that's true, but what's here is extremely worthwhile. Rather than having 15 or 20 levels that you'll forget, Slow Clap has crafted five levels that you will remember, not only because you're forced to do them so many times, but because they're filled with this stylistic flair that will just sear itself into your brain. It makes me sad that so few people will get to experience this because it's so good that it deserves to be seen by everyone.
On that point, I expect a lot of ink will be spilled about what Sifu should have been to allow more people to experience it. Sifu is a game that is so narrow in its focus, so singular in its structure, that it's only for people who want this type of experience, and only for the people who can do it. Many people will not be able to play this video game, for the same reason that many people can't play fighting games online. The barrier to entry is just too high. Some people don't have the reflexes necessary to react to incoming enemy attacks, especially given the lack of telegraphing going on. Some people are just not going to be up for the repetition that this game demands. They'll wish for an easier path through it because they enjoy the fighting, they enjoy the aesthetics, the level design, but they just can't handle how frustrating it can be. None of this challenge is accidental, by the way. It was absolutely designed to be exactly this. Earlier, I mentioned that thing about your death counter not resetting when you kill a boss. That has huge implications on your ability to push through to the subsequent level, since if you were age 55 but your death counter had reset to zero, you would have plenty of attempts available to you in that next level. If, however, you are 55 and your death counter sits at 6 or 7 because the boss was kicking your ass, then you may only have 2, 3 attempts at the next level before it's game over. Similarly, your ability to unlock new abilities is limited by your age. When you hit certain age milestones, you can no longer learn new abilities. That is a very specific design choice that stops people from spending their accrued experience if they have died too many times on a boss. There are a lot of other examples like this, tiny little interventions that Slow Clap have made because they want to preserve the challenge that this game poses, where just a slight tweaking of those things would have resulted in a vastly different experience. I'm sure we're going to see some headlines from some outlets that read Sifu needs an easy mode. And that's a pretty tired conversation at this point, but it becomes a little more interesting in the context of Sifu. See, you could add an easy mode to Returnal, and it doesn't really matter because Returnal offers so much outside of the challenge it poses. So many levels, so many enemies, so many weapons, so much lore, story, etc. If someone played through Returnal on an easy mode setting, they would still experience all of that other stuff. They would just lose the challenge component, which is important, don't get me wrong, but Returnal has a lot more to offer outside of that challenge alone. Sifu isn't quite like that. There's not much game here, it's very lean. If you built an easy mode that lets you button mash through it, yeah, you could finish this game in two hours and you've seen some cool kung fu action and some amazing locations, but I'd wager that that would be a pretty hollow experience. Sifu is about the challenge, it's about the mastery, it's about the pursuit of perfection, it's about repetition. Wax on, wax off. If you remove that requirement, you'd kind of be gutting this game. Now, I'm not out here to say that that shouldn't happen because, you know, why not? It's a video game. Let's not make a mountain out of a molehill. Specifically, many people with particular disabilities may be pushed out of this game entirely. My views on game difficulty have definitely evolved in the context of the accessibility discussion, where I've been forced to think about stuff that I haven't had to think about before because I don't have a disability. So this conversation is rarely cut and dry, but I'm saying that Sifu rests on a carefully calibrated challenge, and anything that disrupts that challenge is going to have a more profound effect on the overall experience than it does in most other games, including the challenging Souls-likes or Rogue-likes on which the difficulty conversation is often centered. So, Brass Tacks, did I like Sifu? Yeah, I did. I do find with these sorts of games, I enjoy them far more in my rearview mirror than I do when I'm in the driver's seat. Right now, the frustration of it feels pretty fresh, but already that's giving way to an appreciation of how well built this combat model is, how well designed the levels are, how stunning the visual motifs can be, and how finely tuned the whole package feels. You'll notice that this review is not titled my typical, I recommend, I do not recommend, because that doesn't quite work here. Sifu is for such a narrow subset of people, far more narrow than is the population of people interested in this game. Like I said, there's going to be a lot of people really disappointed by this game, but not because it's bad. It'll be because it's a really good version of a game that just isn't for them. Alright, so I don't know if any of you are interested in making gaming content or doing games journalism or whatever, but if you are interested in that and you're finding it tough to get a foot in the door somewhere, then can I suggest you start writing? 
I write about 12,000 words a week and I feel one of the reasons I've been able to make it on YouTube is because I write rather than just talking into a microphone. I'm not saying that's the only way to do it, by the way. I mean, most of the biggest YouTubers in any category are doing it unscripted, but writing works for me because it helps me organize my thoughts and it gives me the chance to phrase things exactly how I want them to be phrased. If you're interested in doing any writing but you've got no one to publish you, then maybe think about starting a blog, just a space where you can put your thoughts down on a page, share them with people, maybe even have something to point to if you do ever apply for a job somewhere. If you want to start a blog, then you might want to think about Squarespace. They have an end-to-end -end blog creation template that guides you through the process of setting up a professional-looking blog, helps you publish and promote your work through both email subscriptions and SEO tools, and they have analytics tools so you'll know which of your content is resonating best with your readers. It's super simple to start up. You don't need any experience whatsoever in building a website, and it just lets you start practicing a craft while putting something out into the world so that you can spark a conversation with others or create opportunities opportunities for yourself. As I mentioned earlier, Squarespace are a long-running partner of this channel, three years running now actually. I really appreciate that support. Squarespace are helping me turn my passion into a career and that's what they do for a lot of people because if you want to turn your passion into a career, then a website is a really good place to start. To get started, visit squarespace.com and if you really want to get serious, visit squarespace.com forward slash skill up to get 10% off your purchase of a website or a domain name. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching it.